The highly anticipated Overwatch character Sombra has finally been released to the public, and the people are gobbling her up like a pack of mad dogs <laughs> eating sausage. Much like a sausage, Sombra has mysterious origins. There were references to Sombra in the game since before the beta, leaving people with one question. Canis Sombra? The year is 2016. It's been 16 years since the Y2K bug destroyed all electronics. Credit cards and ATMs may cease to function. North America has been completely ravaged by killer bees, and absolutely everyone is dabbing. Overwatch is released to rave reviews, but something is bothering some players. What is the lore of Overwatch? Most of the Overwatch story is taught to the player the same way my geometry teacher taught. Figure it out yourself, dumbass. So the only way to learn the plot is to watch the official animated shorts, read the webcomics, overanalyze the inane chatter of the characters, catchphrase, or comb every inch of the map for clues in the form of environmental storytelling. It didn't take long for people to find a handful of references to Sombra in game. There are several terminals on Dorado that warn unauthorized access, Sombra protocol. This was the earliest sign pointing to her being a hacker. There are also newspapers littered across Dorado that have the headline, Kenne Sombra. Also on Dorado, there are three manila folders reading Soldato 76, I guess Soldato Tetises, uh, Jack Morrison, and Sombra. This would indicate to me that Sombra was just another alter ego for Morrison, but I'd have been wrong. And lastly, when Reaper spawns on Dorado, he sometimes says, Where's Sombra when you need her? People also found this blurry picture of a masked figure in an open folder. And later, Blizzard tweeted this picture of an Overwatch company memo of Torbjorn and Mercy arguing about the applications of their healing nanobot firing sniper rifle. And people data mined these voice lines from the files. There's a hidden enemy here. Unauthorized person detected. So clearly, this is Sombra. And she's a stealth, healing sniper hacker cloned from Soldier 76's left arm. Then Anna crashed onto the scene and ruined everything. Turns out everyone was wrong. That means this wasn't related to Sombra, and this wasn't related to Sombra, and uh, I'm not quite willing to give that one up just yet. But the Sombra game had only just begun. The Anna Origins trailer had something odd. If you pause right here, do you see it? Of course not. But what if I enhance the contrast? This is a string of hexadecimal numbers and that can only mean one thing. It's an alternate reality game or to the layman, an ARG, an interactive networked narrative that uses the real world as a platform and employs transmedia storytelling to deliver a story that may be altered by players' ideas or actions. Is there a... Is there a simple English page for this? No? Now your average amateur decoder would just convert the hex to ASCII and call it a day, but that just returns this garbage. Now if you were a real cryptographer, you'd immediately realize this is a simple Zor cipher with a constant of 23, and you'd get this string of text. <sighs> well, I, I don't know Spanish, so I guess the video is over. <laughs> This translates to, she who has the information, has the power. She who has the information, has the power, etc, uh, etc, et sob. But wait, later in the video, there's another chunk of hex, and this translates to, she who has the information, has the power. But wait, it says ra at the beginning, so if you put the two together... This message only served to tell the community, the hunt is on for Sombra clues, so watch every frame of everything we put out. Twice. Well, it didn't take long for that mentality to pay off. I found a bunch of clues. Shell companies, email addresses, baby pictures. Uh, but it turns out Jeff Kaplan is a real person and not part of the ARG. And he still hasn't added me on LinkedIn. But some less driven individuals notice that at the end of the developer update introducing Anna, this glitchy mess appears. And if I grab this frame and apply it to the back of some prepackaged meats, that's right, look more familiar now, it's barcodes. Scanning these barcodes will net you several fly honeys in barcode Kanojo and several lines of binary code. 
If you stack the lines of binary like a layer cake of secrets and convert the ones and zeros into black and white pixels, you get a QR code. Take out your phones now and scan the QR code. Do you feel like a hacker? Do you feel like you solved a puzzle? That Spanish text that's on your phone screen, because you totally actually scanned the QR code, translates to, was that easy? Well, now that I have your attention, allow me to make things much more difficult. So, uh, that message was also useless. Uh, she wasn't lying, though. The next clue is obtuse. The Summer Games announcement video had two clues in it. People found more, but there were only two. One is this code in Tracer's tale, which I'll come back to much later. And the second is, uh, it's like an incredibly difficult spot the difference game. So only in the North American announcement video, there are these symbols in the background of some of the shots of the new unlockables. The symbols correspond to sections of a 3x3 grid, and we'll come back to that shortly. But this video isn't long enough, so we're gonna look at my favorite part of the ARG. I've mainly been focusing on the successes, but there were a lot of false leads. Some were small, like the cloaked figure in the Summer Games announcement, but some were followed comically far. I love watching conspiratorial train wrecks. I watch Ancient Aliens almost as much as the government watches me. Hey government, if you're watching, why don't you smash that like button? It would help me a lot, not as much as say, like, affordable. At one point, someone tried to push their sombra fan art as a false lead. And then they tried it again. And again. But the best false lead comes from something far more innocent. Compression artifacts. If you look directly up on Dorado, which is the map to look for Sombra clues, you'll see a strange faint pattern. What could it mean? It could mean that that's the peak of the skybox and textures mess up there all the time. Or it could be a code in the sky. Sky code. It's pretty cool looking, yeah? Well, the community went wild. Sky code t-shirts, sky code mugs, sky coding, and so much fan art. Unroll Sky Coat. Slap it on some staff paper. Is it a song? No, that's definitely not a song, but can you hear it on distant guitars in Dorado? No, but people thought they were onto something. This Sky song, this false lead off of false lead inspired art as well. The song I've been playing in the background is very loosely based on the Sky song. Sky Code was super dumb, but it really inspired people. And that's why it's my favorite part of the ARG. It only gets worse from here. Why would you ever go to the Overwatch website? If you want quality, timely Overwatch info, you should just check YouTube. Surprisingly, it didn't take long for someone to discover this apparently corrupted screenshot of Dorado on the Overwatch media page. While it looked corrupted, it was actually purposely data moshed. Data moshing is usually used for stuff like this. Peekaboo! I see you! But in this case, it was used to hide info. Directly next to the corrupted image is a non-corrupted one. If you open both images in text editors, which, yes, is possible, and you isolate the differences between the two, you get the message, Why are you looking at the sky? The answer isn't over your heads, it's behind you. Sometimes you need to analyze your previous achievements. Basically telling people sky code is nothing. But what's all this about achievements? On August 11th, 2016, a player by the name of Zagreus noticed an achievement on the Overwatch website, simply named... Eh? And the image for the achievement is an inverted question mark. This obviously had something to do with Junkrat. Or far more likely Sombra. Zagreus noticed the source code of this page had this message embedded within. Damn! Not bad. However, I'm getting bored. Let's try something new in the same direction. Then it looks like Sombra's cat walked across her keyboard. I bet you were excited for Sombra once she came out, huh, Zagreus? Uh, n never mind. This mosh pit of syllables from the source code is not what Sombra says when she ults. It's actually a visionaire cipher. Visionaire cipher is not only the name of my super cool Shadowrun character, but also a method of encryption that requires a password to decode. To get the password, you take that 3x3 grid from the Summer Games announcement, and... Tracer Torbjorn wins Ton Sim Met Trad Vemir Sebastian Gen McDreamtree. That is the password for the Visionaire Cipher, and is not at all related to the Welsh town of the same name. 
When decoded, the cipher becomes a URL, which leads to this image, which is also datamashed. By using the same tactic from before, the text hidden in the image is revealed to be sweet ASCII art of a skull. And the message, it seems you like these little games. Why don't we play a real one? At this point, people started seriously looking for stuff in the actual Overwatch gameplay again. You know, a real game. So, if you ever wanted a map of all the playing cards in the game, well, that's available now, thanks to people trying to solve this. Unfortunately, their work was all for naught, because they, all they had to do was wait. On the 23rd of August, a strange post appeared on the official Overwatch forums from a user named Skycoder. That there is the binary for the number 23. You'll need to know that later. There has been some phony stuff posted to the forums previously, so ordinarily this would just be discarded as trash. But, uh... Yeah, it seems pretty legitimate now. She who has the information has the power. This block of text is base 64. You don't need to know what that means, it's just another method of encryption. If you decode it, you get another ASCII skull. So if you take both skulls, remove the spaces and formatting, and then subtract each byte from both skulls, I don't know what that means exactly, but don't worry about it, you get this string of nonsense. Take each individual letter and shuffle it 23 steps down the alphabet, you get, I promised you a game, I believe you game detectives would call it a trailhead. Blizzard to USA, ambass, calaveras.html. The post initially said it was created 23 hours ago. But one hour from then, it said it was created 22 hours ago. And after that, 21. Coincidence? No. It was a timer and it was counting down. A few things happened before the counter reached zero, though, so we'll come back to that later. Blizzard does where Blizzard hosts their media, and also deals 50% more damage against fire-based enemies. Through a bit of trial and error, someone found this URL, which leads to this MP4 of a report on a patient named Janina Kowalska, the Polish version of Jane Doe. Judging by the shards jammed all up in her orbitals, this is an x-ray of Anna. Look closely here. Pretty dang spooky, huh? I didn't add that, guys. This is 100% undoctored. Buried in the properties of the MP4 is the message, you seem to be very interested in these heroes. May be interested to know some details that I found out about them. Did she find Torbjorn's YouTube channel? Omnic writes, tuh. Now, I bet you can figure out where the next clue is. Here's a hint has something to do with beeps. That's right, it's this heart monitor thing. There are 26 dashes here, and if you assign each one a letter of the alphabet, it spells out Moment in Crime. Moment in Crime seemed to be a reference to the Overwatch short A Moment in Crime, Special Report, The Junkers. But the short contained no clues. You had to go to amomentincrime.com for the next clue. Carved into the HTML is a message from Sombra. Establishing connection, protocol Sombra, version 1.3 initialized, infiltrating the automatic email response system, terminating connection. If you sent an email to tips at a moment in crime.com, you received this automated response. It's a message from the Australian government thanking you for performing the patriotic duty of narking, which is then rudely interrupted by Sombra, sending you what looks like timestamps, followed by what I'm going to name my firstborn son. The implication here is that this website was previously owned by the Australian government until Sombra hacked the site and its email services. However, using the Wayback Machine, I can see that the previous owner of this domain was Nancy Lindley Gauthier, an author specializing in romance mystery horseback riding novels, like Heartspur, which seems to be about a woman in a love triangle with a cowboy and a horse. However, pursuing this lead is a lot like dating a horse. You shouldn't do it. But these numbers from the email are actually coordinates that point to characters on the two skulls. Uh, this one points to an S, this one points to a J, etc. This is used as a key to decode the string below, and it becomes this. Sombra. Information is power. Sombra. But it's encrypted as an Xbox Live username. Hey, do you remember that forum post from earlier? Well, the forum post finally finished counting down, and then... A moment in crime started counting up. Very slowly. This message was also added to the source code. Well done, you have my password. Hacking this television program was meaningless. Wait for what's coming. And of course, she's right. It's all meaningless. All of it. Two months of nothing. Then the site reached 100% and updated. Transmission complete. Finishing upload, upload finished. Unit Bastion E54 engaged. 
The website hitting 100% just so happened to coincide with a small Overwatch update. This patch's notes were really boring. Too boring. The community set to work, and it was discovered that parking Bastion next to a hacked Sombra terminal caused him to beep in Morse code, the code of dots and dashes used to send telegraphs to the Western Territories. This is Morse code, which translates to... Uh, which is another vinegar cipher, which is decoded using Sombra information as power Sombra, minus the symbols, and... Access www.bomerico.mexico. Ask parents permission to go online. Lumerico is the power company responsible for covering Dorado with these ziggurat power stations. The Lumerico website had a lot of stuff on it, but it was all pretty boring and very in Spanish. But if you called this number, you'd hear this message. Uh, this is a bunch of numbers. Each number is a letter of the alphabet, and if you shift each letter 23 positions down, you get take control. Uh, plus some garbage before it, but don't worry about that yet. This led to this URL. Uh, now the first part of the call, the garbage, is actually the key for the cipher on this page. This is a long message, so I'm not gonna read all of it, but basically she's saying the Lomerico CEO is bad, his name is Guillermo Potero, and he used to be an incredibly popular president of Mexico. That is, until he stepped down from the office to create clean and affordable energy for Mexico. But what about before he was president? Uh, he was a war hero then. Uh, everybody loves him. But Sombra says he's corrupt or something, and maybe a reptilian. I don't know, she doesn't really go into details, but you are gonna help her take him down. Uh, the message also contains an employee password and username for the site. This login serves as a key to a treasure trove with most valuable cargo. Company emails. Most of the emails were pointless, like this one about them getting a new espresso machine, or this one about the new espresso machine being broken. However, this email has a link to Guillermo's special login page. To get the login credentials, you simply had to dump the data from the pages get subpages get protocol and upload the dump to GitHub revealing a class president bypass PHP file containing Guillermo's username and his encrypted password, which is easily decrypted by writing a function using the class authentication PHP. I'm not going to waste your time by explaining any of that. It's pretty self-explanatory, I'm sure. <coughs> the reward for doing all that nonsense was access to Guillermo's emails. His emails were boring and not at all incriminating. Although this communique with Vishkar isn't the least suspicious thing in the world, it seems Vishkar would like Lumerico to build some power stations in Rio. Vishkar Corp is the company that Symmetra works for. They are most famous for building things out of solidified light and bombing their competitors in Rio de Janeiro when they didn't get the contract to rebuild Rio. Shortly after his account was first accessed, Sombra sent an email to his account. I see you've been able to infiltrate into his mail. Don't worry, he cannot see this email. I've hidden it from his site if he connects from one of his known IP addresses. Yeah, that sounds safe. It's not like CEOs of powerful companies travel frequently. I can't think of any countries that would be interested in clean, renewable energy. I need a little bit of time to establish the next set of protocols. Stay alert early next week. I'll throw some dirty laundry in his emails that can accidentally leak to the public. We'll see how the media will react to that. <laughs> one of the emails ever gotten someone in trouble. A few days later, Sombra planted a single email with an ominous subject line which vaguely talked about money being transferred through banks. It's plausible that Guillermo didn't think Vishkar was responsible for the explosion, but you combo the Vishkar connection with the sketchy bank transfers, it's game Wait. over. He's caught looking like the Monopoly man with his pants down, one hand in the cookie jar, while the other hand is strangling a golden eagle. And the eagle has Mexico written on it, and the cookie jar has shady dealings written on it, and the pants are labeled as the Iron Curtain. Over the next few days, Sombra leaked the emails and put a provocative post on the Lumerico news page. And some more boring emails came in. None of that mattered, though. When the site updated to add new emails, they also updated lumerico.mx slash omnix.txt. This page was only found because of a programming joke which I am not going to explain. Omnix.txt used to just be a bunch of question marks. Now it read, allow sulking, allow Mx chick chan manic mx chick chan Chicken, you have a drumstick and your brain stops sticking mx chick chan mx uh, you can read uh Tolkien is the mayan calendar and these are animals in the mayan language the mayan calendar is a lot like a seed so. 
They both have symbols around the outside representing animals, and they both herald the end times. Your doom approaches. Imix is day one, Chick Chan is day five, etc. The Mayans actually had a surprisingly simple number system. It's similar to a tally system. A dot is one, two dots is two, three, four, and a line is five. A line and a dot is six, seven, etc. Two lines on top of each other is 10, three lines is 15, and obviously a zero is a clam. It gets a little strange once you get to 20. So you know how we have 10 digits, zero through nine? They effectively had 20 digits, zero through 19. So this is 20. A one followed by a shell. It's not a 10 because 10 fits in this space. Mayan numbers can get all the way to 19 before they overflow into two spaces. If you write out these numbers using Mayan numerals, it doubles as Morse code. The Morse code translates to execute attack. Lumerico.mx slash execute attack slash index.html had this inspiring rhapsody. The moment has come. These emails expose the truth about Portero. Ah yes, who can forget the damning email where Guillermo tells his employees that he's proud of their hard work, but rest is important and they should take advantage of their paid vacation time. Initiated the revolt and have convinced the people of Mexico to support our cause. Now is the time to strike. Convert his precious inauguration on November 1st to a large movement against it. I need you to do one thing. Log into the security chief's account just kind of mess around, I guess. I changed their password to this. I needed numbers and symbols for security. Once November 1st rolled around, logging into Lumerico as the security chief gave you access to the terminal. The commands available at the terminal were override, help, version, about, and the fan favorite, grep. Obviously, override is the cool hacker option, but using the override command required you to answer three security questions. What is your favorite movie? Ah, oh, it's gotta be some like it bought, cause it's a poster on the Hollywood page. What is your favorite cookie flavor? Ah, oh, that's gotta be that Nuevas Sabor Delicias. There's an email about Girl Scout cookies and the chief asks for that flavor by name. And of course, secret. To get the secret code, you had to use this command. About Grepter. To learn that you had to use that command, you had to read this corrupted looking email and see that Tur was highlighted. Uh, using the command about grep tur searches the about file for all the lines containing tur. Here are those aforementioned lines. The answer to the secret question is open anything 1.1.0. Answering those questions correctly granted access to these commands three. LS cat exec. LS lists the files payload and de aquila and hibd.html. Shift the letters 23 spaces down the alphabet and you get yourself a fine key. Using a cat on .html reveals an ASCII key made up of a string of repeating letters. Shift those bad boys down 23 like a nice bicycle going uphill and you've got some keys are shaped as locks. Index me. Somebody bring me my black hood cause I'm about to execute the heck out of this payload. Ah, it needs a key. Some keys are shaped as locks. This code and tracer's tail, which I'll come back to much later. This is the key. Executing the payload incremented the counter in the upper right hand corner of the site, and it's implied here that you are helping to overload one of the reactors. I don't think what you were doing is ever exactly explained, but it sure seems like you're trying to Chernobyl Dorado, which is a tad rude. After a full day of cute and PLs, Lumerico was updated to look like this. Good job, folks. I would not have done it without your help. Anyway, I got the resources needed for my next hit. You'll love it. Expect to hear from me in the coming days. I'm going to send something to thank you. Hopefully you can use it. Das you friends. And that is the end of the ARG. Looking back, that was quite the play. She was able to snipe some sick tech from Lumerico, assassinate Guillermo's character, I'm no economist, but she probably crippled Mexico's economy. And the people of Mexico lost a hero in Guillermo. It's not all hopeless though. The people of Mexico found a hero in Sombra, and I'm sure that many Mexican citizens will get more active in politics after they attended those Lumerico protests that were arranged by a gang that beats Omnix to death in the street and steals from children. The Overwatch community didn't leave empty handed from this whole shindig though. Shortly after the conclusion of the ARG, Sombra was released, and she had a Sky Cody mode which is pretty funny. But more importantly, this spray was added to the game as a reward for the community, and it's only available on the PC, officially making the PC version the objectively better product. And isn't that all that anyone ever wanted? Thank you, Sombra. But there's still one mystery left unsolved. 
not like a sexual thing with the horse, right? 